For most of college, I would spend a week or two at summer camp, sometimes junior high, sometimes senior high, sometimes both. And each time at summer camp, I would often have a cabin of girls and then I would have a mixed uh, small group and would have a co-leader. And different co-leaders and I, you know, had a different jive. We could do different things together. We had a different sort of rapport. And there was one year where I had an older man as my co-leader. I was in my, I was maybe 19 or 20 and he was probably late 40s, early 50s, age is sort of relative. <laughs> when you're in your early 20s, I wasn't overly concerned about it. And we sort of shared our responsibilities. We would ask questions, we would share the prayers, all those kind of normal things. And throughout the week, there were just these weird things and they weren't clearly over the line things, but they were on the line kind of things that made me uncomfortable and uh, put me ill at ease. And I was young, so I wasn't really great about setting my boundaries in that regard. But I also didn't want just somebody else to sort of handle my problem for me. I was trying to practice at those things. So I told the camp dean, who was also my mentor, um, and I'd worked with him before and he was from the same church. And so I explained the issues and he offered to have conversations. I said, no, let me try and sort of talk through strategy for how to do that. And then um, there were just, you know, continuous little things. Again, nothing super, super over the line, but enough that just put me on edge and made me uncomfortable. And I think at one point, um, Pastor Greg had a conversation with him. And then on the last day of camp, I was in a tank top and I was saying goodbye to folks and I was trying to keep my distance, but he went in for a hug and then he kissed me a couple times on my neck and it made me really uncomfortable. But again, I was pretty young and not practiced at saying, hey, knock that off, that was not okay. And so I just left, right? I loaded up on my car and I left. And I let it be and I didn't have any follow-up conversation with Greg until probably like the next January or February when he was starting to recruit for summer camp. And he called me and he said, hey, Debbie, are you thinking about camp for this year? And I said, well, is X man still, is he going to be a counselor? And he said, well, I don't know, why? And I said, well, if he is, I'm not going. <laughs> I wasn't going to stop him from going, but I wasn't going to put myself in that situation again. I just wasn't up for it. And so Greg said, well, you know, tell me about what's going on. Tell me why that is. So I explained the situation, explained my recollection of the events and how it made me feel. And he said, well, would you consider mediation with me and him? And I said, yes. So he said, okay. So they drove down. It was about an hour drive without traffic, maybe an hour and a half if they'd hit traffic. Uh, we met in a conference room in the student center. We didn't meet in the dorms, not in the lobby, anything like that. It was very neutral. And uh, Greg mediated the situation, right? He had us have prayer and we each shared our story and what we remembered and how it had made us feel and sort of what we needed from the other. And it wasn't a great conversation. I mean, Greg did a really good job with it, but this other guy just couldn't understand my perspective and he wasn't really willing to own any part of wrongdoing. So they had like the hour drive home to process and talk about what had gone on. And Greg called me back after, not that night, but a different day and had a follow-up conversation with me. And he said, really, um, thank you for coming to the table. Thank you for engaging in this conversation and sharing what was hard for you. And uh, this man is not gonna be at camp this year and we would love for you to come back. He said he really couldn't hear you and he wasn't willing to accept any wrongdoing, um, any even towing the line or overstepping the line. And we can't have somebody like that at summer camp. We need somebody who can acknowledge their boundaries and hear if they've crossed a boundary or upset somebody and, and make it better. So this week, as we talk about reconciliation, often in the church, we talk about like, you know, forgive and forget and making it better. And, and reconciliation takes work. Reconciliation takes work from both parties. You have to be willing to state what was a problem. You have to be willing to ask for what you need. You have to be willing to, on the other side to hear what was a problem, to sort of process it or maybe share your perspective or why it wasn't a problem in your mind or in your heart and figure out if there's a way forward. Is there a way to repair the relationship? Is there a way to truly reconcile? And for me, since then, and in a lot of different situations and working with a lot of different folks, it has been incredibly important to make sure that we separate forgiveness from reconciliation, that we can 
follow a call to forgive, to let go of the anger and the hurt and the resentment in a relationship without also requiring stepping back into it because some relationships aren't healthy. Some people can't honor your boundaries. Some people can't own their stuff. Some people are not great at being in a relationship. And sometimes they're great in relationships with other people, but not with us. So it's not like, oh, well, some people are just a lost cause. But for particular individuals, sometimes we just aren't called to be in relationship with them. Sometimes we can't reconcile. And so even as we invite you to think about reconciliation and to pray about reconciliation with particular relationships, I want you to know that I know personally, intimately, sometimes it's just not possible. And so in those cases, I pray for forgiveness, for the letting go of the anger, the hurt, and the resentment. And I pray for healing, for God to work in ways that we as humans simply can't. It's hard. It is hard to be a Christian. It is hard to follow our calling. It is hard to be in relationship with people, particularly difficult people. My prayers are with you, friends. Take care.